did you kind of expect the kind of attention when this all started? Well, you know, I wear two hats. As a Sunday television preacher, as an ordained minister in my Sunday church, uh, I made some remarks about current events and they were insensitive and I've apologized for those. Uh, but the bigger question is now, in my Monday through Friday job as a state representative, should I be uh, punished or censored or silenced by establishment members of our own government for what I said in church? Uh, now listen, my, my remarks were offensive, I've already apologized, but I'm not being accused of drunk driving. I'm not being accused of, I wasn't arrested by the police. I'm literally now being removed from a committee because I quoted the Bible in church. Is that really the job of the government to step in there and censor uh, what we say on Sundays? I don't think it is. So what do you think this all says about free speech and the future of free speech? Well, it raises you know concerns. Before I ever ran for office, I asked the question, of course, should I be allowed to, and is it legal for me to continue my Sunday ministry as an ordained preacher? and at the same time run for office and represent the people Monday through Friday as an elected official. And all the lawyers said, yes, of course, you can do that. But now essentially I'm being told by Leader Del Grosso and establishment member, members of the Republican Party that no, I'm not allowed to do both. And they're making this decision for me and they're putting me in a very difficult position where I have to choose. Either I follow my calling from God on Sundays or I can sit on certain committees during the week, Monday through Friday as a state uh, representative, but I can't do both. And so therefore I have suspended my Sunday preaching ministry for the next six weeks. During the legislative session, I will not continue to produce uh, Sunday Bible teaching on our television program, but I am 100% devoted to representing the people who elected me in House District 15 Monday through Friday and I will do that without my Sunday ministry overshadowing the work that the people deserve for me to do Monday through Friday. And so with all of this happening, why did you feel the need to step up and apologize for the comments that you made? Well, you know, I admit the things that I said were insensitive. I did not show proper compassion for the victims of this horrific tragedy. Dan and Michelle Wilkins were attacked by a criminal and their baby, Aurora Wilkins, should really be the center of this story. Uh, I'm sad that I've become the focus here. Some people are trying to shoot the messenger. Okay, I get that. But the baby, Aurora Wilkins, who was murdered after seven months in her mother's womb, should be receiving justice. And Colorado law is not giving her justice. Colorado law says you can't treat the criminal with homicide, you can't, uh, try them for homicide because baby Aurora Wilkins was not really a person, not really a baby. Well, of course she's a baby. Of course she's a person. And her mother, Michelle Wilkins, is an innocent victim of this horrific crime. Deserve, that family deserves full justice from the Colorado law. But twice in past years, the Democrats have passed uh, and blocked good fetal homicide legislation that's already law in 38 other states that would give that family justice and charge the criminal with homicide. Uh, unfortunately, that's not gonna be done unless we change and fix the Colorado law. And then we saw that there's a, there was a GoFundMe page and we just, you know, anyone who's donated can put any name on there, um, but we've seen reports saying that, that you donated $1,000 and the family rejected that donation. Um, can we confirm that you did donate? Was that you? Our ministry, out of uh, compassion after I made my insensitive remarks, we reached out to the family with an apology. And right now they're suffering, obviously. They're, they've been through a horrific tragedy and I apologize to them if I have uh, compounded their tragedy. But I am trying to show compassion. I am trying, to, our ministry did uh, try to offer them financial assistance. And that's fine, I, I respect the family's wishes. We wanna honor them and we wanna show compassion to them in their time of suffering. But we also wanna demand justice from the Colorado government, and I, I think the family deserves that. So did you actually make a donation to the family on the GoFundMe page? Our ministry did make a donation.
And so can you kind of just say what the comments that you've made, and I know you said they were taken out of context in, in previous interviews, what exactly were you trying to say from the beginning? Well, I never said, and it was falsely attributed to my lips, I never said it was an act of God. I never said it was God's will. I don't even believe that. My, my heavens no, it's, it's the opposite of that. In fact, what I said was the opposite of that, that this was a demonic spirit of murder inside the criminal who hurt this innocent woman. I never blame the victim, and I don't even think that way. Uh, so, uh, but what I did say was not compassionate enough. I said this was the curse of God on America for our sin of abortion. And granted, uh, you know, I was trying to speak the truth, but I did not do so in a loving manner. And for that, I did apologize. Do you feel that this is going to have to, this will make you have to change the way that you um, speak during your sermons or on your show? Well, you know, legally they say it's okay for me to be a preacher on Sundays and a state representative Monday through Friday, but politically it's very hard. And now I'm being told by leadership in the Republican Party uh, that I'm not allowed to do both because one job overshadows the other job. And that's why I've suspended my TV preaching ministry for six weeks until the end of the legislative session. I will be 100% devoted to representing the people of House District 15 without the distraction of my Sunday preaching. Now, when we resume that ministry on May 7th, uh, I will come back with hopefully more compassion, and, and, but we're also gonna speak truth. And I will never stop preaching the gospel, and I will never stop quoting the Bible. Even if some people are offended by that, I ask their forgiveness, but I feel like I'm called to, to speak truth in society. And listen, if this costs my political career, I understand, but would you rather have a state representative who is out there fighting for principle and standing up for pro-life principles and traditional marriage and religious freedom, uh, and sometimes he gets the words wrong? Or would you rather have a state representative who's afraid to talk about these things because it might offend somebody? Uh, that's really gonna be up to the voters. And so what are you hoping that people will take away from this situation? Well, I hope that people will uh, consider three things. Number one, that I have already sincerely apologized. Uh, number two, that it's not the government's job to step into my church and tell me what Bible verses I'm not allowed to preach. And I think the government has done that by removing me from a committee. And number three, uh, I wanna show compassion for the victims of this horrific tragedy and demand that baby Aurora Wilkins gets justice that child deserves justice. She was murdered and the criminal will not be charged with homicide under Colorado law. We have got to fix this. We need a fetal homicide law on the books like they have in 38 other states. And this family should get the justice that they deserve. And then just a question about the apology that you made. Um, some people called it an attack on the media um, after you made uh, your apology. Um, what do you have to say to, to those people? Well, there were some honest reporters who quoted my actual words, and I acknowledge that. And then there were some dishonest reporters who twisted my words and accused me of saying things I did not say. And so I cannot apologize for the words that were falsely attributed to me. I didn't say that. But I can apologize, and I think I did apologize for the words I did actually say. Listen, the timing was wrong. Uh, the words were wrong. I was not showing enough compassion but I will continue to try to speak truth in a loving manner. Okay. Um, is there anything that you think that I'm missing that you want to touch base on, anything that I forgot to mention? Well, if anyone's interested, the full context of my apology and the correction of the false media reports is posted on my website, gordonforcolorado.com, and people can see uh, the full context of my apology, my remarks, and also uh, the important part is that I'm demanding justice for baby Aurora Wilkins. She should be the focus of this story, and I'm sad that it's it kind of turned on, on me that it, you know people want to shoot the messenger. Okay, maybe I deserve that. But the real focus of this story needs to be justice for the Wilkins family and for baby Aurora. Okay. 
uh, sorry, one last question. What do you think is going to take for justice to happen with, with all of this going on right now? Well, I think Colorado law needs to change. And I've seen reports out of the state Senate that they may be introducing a fetal homicide law. Uh, it's been shot down the past two years by the Democrats who've said, no, that baby is not a person, so that baby doesn't deserve justice. The murderer should not be charged with homicide. Well, that's ridiculous. That baby, of course it's a person. And I'm hopeful that uh, the Colorado Senate will be able to introduce positive legislation as they already have in 38 other states to put that fetal homicide law on the books and give justice to this family. Uh, I had a couple questions. Uh, what do you think is stopping the Democratic Party from passing legislation that both parties uh, can find you know, agreement on, uh, especially you know, after something like this you know, brings it to the, the forefront of everyone's mind? Well, I've already heard um, groups like Planned Parenthood and National Abortion Rights Action League uh, are already demanding that the Democrats vote no on whatever legislation comes forward. And they, ha they haven't even introduced any words yet. But the pro-abortion groups are already lockstep gonna you know, demand that the Democrats vote no. Come on, there needs to be some middle ground here where reasonable people from both sides come together without all this pressure from the outside pro-abortion groups uh, to say, listen, uh, we can have legislation that doesn't even mention abortion. The fetal homicide bill is not about personhood. It doesn't have that word. It's not about uh, pro-choice. It's about justice for the victim. Listen, a pregnant woman was stabbed. Her baby was killed. Doesn't that baby deserve some kind of justice? And I think the fetal homicide legislation that's being proposed and, and has been shot down in the past couple years uh, is a good middle ground compromise that doesn't contemplate punishing abortion doctors but it simply says that if you commit a horrific crime against a pregnant woman, then you can be charged with homicide if the baby is lost. And I think that makes sense. I think that's a good common sense approach and I hope the Democrats can uh, you know, reject the pressure that they're feeling from some of their own groups and, and really come to the defense of this innocent family. Uh, last question for me. Um, you, know, you mentioned that you're stepping down from your TV um, gospel um, for six weeks. If it came down to it, and the, the representatives, you know, uh, you know, the leadership came out and told you, "Hey, we want you to stay off of, you know, the religious stuff. And we don't. We want you to focus on the state representative." Would it be a conflict of interest for you? Would it be something, you know, I, I don't want to go against this calling I have from God, uh, but I was also elected by the people of Colorado. Is that something that you know that's weighed in your mind at all? Well, you know, if leadership wants to pressure me to forsake my calling and stop preaching the gospel on Sundays, I would have to disobey. Although I've suspended my ministry for six weeks, uh, we're gonna resume that after this legislative session is over. And if the people decide that I can't do both jobs, I'm gonna leave that in the hands of the people. Uh, I'm not gonna resign from my job as a state representative. Uh, but I am also not going to quit preaching the gospel just because some members of the Republican establishment say that there ought to be a religious litmus test for public office, that you can't be a Sunday preacher and also uh, sit on these committees during the week. I respectfully disagree with that. I think our founding fathers established the Constitution so that we would have freedom of speech, freedom of religious expression, especially in the Sunday pulpit in my church, and then uh, also be allowed to let the people decide if I should be able to represent them Monday through Friday. By taking that decision out of the hands of the people, uh, the Republican leadership is establishing not just uh, silencing me from, from what I say in church, but they're also taking that duly elected power away from the voters of my district, and I don't think they're being fair to my voters.